you, you should be larger than life on stage. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be learning more about the life and career of Brian Setzer. Born April 10th, 1959 in Massapequa, New York, Brian Setzer was interested in music from a young age and started out playing brass horns before switching to guitar. I started playing guitar when I was eight years old and luckily my, par my parents didn't have a lot of money, they were broke, and uh, they found a guitar player uh, in the Yellow Pages. He really took his time and showed me how to play the guitar and how to read and write music. And then of course I was influenced by all these people growing up uh, as, as a young boy, probably bands like the Allman Brothers and Creedence Clearwater Revival. And then one day I was listening to a Beatles record and my dad came in and started singing along with Honey Don't. And I said, how do you know? How come you say you will when you won't? And he was singing along with it. He goes, uh, this is by a guy named Carl Perkins. I don't know who the Beatles are, but it's by a guy named Carl Perkins. And then I had realized all the Beatles and Stones, Rolling Stones records, the first ones, were rockabilly songs. So that's how I really got my vision of what I, what I was. Once his musical influences were set by the end of the 1970s, Setzer formed a rockabilly revival band. The Stray Cats lineup was solidified by 1979, with Setzer being joined by Lee Rocker and Slim Jim Phantom. The trio then set out to stimulate interest in their chosen genre and the music of the 1950s. I don't really think about reviving musical styles. I love the sounds of um, music that comes from the blues. I love jazz. I love country, swing, rock and roll, rockabilly. To me, it's all, it all comes from the blues, and in my way of thinking, there's no reason why you can't take all these kinds of music and, and blend them together, mm -hmm. which, is, which is kind of how I always thought. And I never consciously thought of blending them. It just kind of happens in my head, and it comes out of my hands that way. They gained a following in the New York scene. However, it was their move to the United Kingdom that really solidified the Stray Cats as a success. I love the Stray Cats because the boys in the band are, are my brothers, you know. I mean, we grew up since we were seven years old, you know. I would like to tour the States with them. Uh, we're just very, very popular in Europe. Just three months after moving to England in the summer of 1980, the band had a record contract. Their breakthrough album was 1982's Built for Speed, and it made them popular in Europe as well as in the US. This record featured the hit Rock This Town, and that song has since been listed as one of the most important songs in rock history. They followed that up with Stray Cat Strut, and these singles exemplified their punk-infused jazz rock style. In 1984, the band broke up. It was also around this time that Setzer began performing with former Led Zeppelin frontman Robert Plant in his R&B-inspired rock band, The Honey Drippers. By 1986, Setzer had struck out on his own and released a mildly successful solo album. Even so, the Stray Cats reunited that year and managed to stay together until the early 1990s before parting ways, only to reunite again for a farewell tour in the 2000s. In 1987, Setzer was able to pay homage to his idol Eddie Cochran by portraying him in the film La Bamba. He's uh, my biggest inspiration, you know, when I saw a picture of Eddie Cochran. I said, wow, I don't know, I want to look like that guy. I wanted to just kind of, I thought he was the coolest thing. And then when I heard his music, it was like a double, double knockout punch. You know, I just thought he's the guy. I want to pattern myself after this guy Eddie Cochran. And uh, so when I started, I really wanted to uh, sound like him and look like him and evolve from there, I guess. By 1992, Setzer had founded the blues and swing band, the Brian Setzer Orchestra. I always do things in extremes. <laughs> it seems to go from three piece to eighteen piece to sometimes playing alone. No, uh, I always play the same style of guitar, and one day I had the idea to um, write a, a big band, to have a, a big band behind the Stray Cats. And to me, it, I, I thought to myself, why wouldn't this work? Because it's all the same music. Yeah. It's true, the big band is much more jazz oriented, so when those guys are playing those chords, you gotta be aware of what's going past you. But to me, I play the same style of guitar in that format in any format, it's still me, 
mm-hmm. if it's front of, if it's with three people or, or 18 people. The instrument ensemble was an ambitious project, and the band's popularity grew primarily due to its energetic live show. The orchestra's biggest mainstream hit came in 1998 with their cover of Jump Jive and Whale, and that song won Setzer one of his three Grammy Awards. I knew that it was something musically that had not been done before. There had not been a guitar leading a big band because the, the big band era died and rock and roll was born, so the two never got to meet. Throughout his time with the Brian Setzer Orchestra, the frontman continued to release solo records. In 2002, he joined several members of rock royalty on an episode of The Simpsons, mentoring Homer while at rock and roll fantasy camp. We're going to start with the fundamentals, playing a burning guitar with your teeth. Setzer is almost as recognizable for his look as he is for his music. His bouffant blonde pompadour and 50s-style clothing is a throwback to the original rockabilly days. He is recognized as the man who brought two dying musical genres back to popularity, and that's why Brian Setzer is known as the King of Swing. Most big bands really don't approach it from the guitar point of view, I think. Um, and the guitar leads the orchestra, so it's going to rock because that's what I do. 